I'm super stoked to be here and talk a little bit about Minecraft today. Um, we have had two camps uh, in Cambria this summer, this last summer and the summer before. So um, also Max and I have presented this at the Monterey Bay Aquarium before as well and at the Slow Q. So Max and I have gone on this roadshow a couple times. So we're pretty excited to show and share with you uh, how, how this tool can be very beneficial and it really, really gets your children engaged with um, Minecraft. And I also have brought today uh, Megan August Evans, who is a, a teacher that uh, last year was at Monarch Grove, and also she started a after-school club and was able to charge a nominal fee. Uh, to get the nominal fee, she was able to pay for her Minecraft. There was a waiting list, and I'll let her talk a little bit more about that. It was very, very successful, a great adventure, and you don't have to have money to do it. <laughs> you can gain that money really quick for uh, some folks that don't have the funds to be able to, to do the Minecraft. And my son, Max, and I have been doing this for a while, and we're really excited to share and show today. And so go ahead and hit it, Max. We'll go to the next slide. So what happens in Minecraft, what I've witnessed and, and seen, is that your comfort zone when you're starting to touch Minecraft for the first time, actually jumping, moving, flying, um, all these different kinds of things, you really, really get um, <laughs> a little bit overwhelmed. Um, however, at the camps what we've done is we brought teachers, uh, students, and parents all in the same room, and the teachers learn from the students, the, stu the students learn from the teachers, as well as teaching the parents how to play. So it becomes a win-win situation, especially for the students that do already know how to use it. They're very, very uh, excited to be able to share what they know and to be able to uh, impart that knowledge on parents and teachers. So, go ahead, next one. <laughs> so during the camp, we've had a lot of fun with uh, different ways, um, and I did bring some of our heads here. We have Steve and Creeper. You'll learn about him a little bit later. Hopefully our students will talk about that today, and I'm very excited that we do have students in the room today. I think it's really, really cool. Um, they're very, very passionate, and again, Minecraft allows you to build anything. Go ahead, thanks. So the difference that I'm going to talk about today is Minecraft uh, EDU, so it's for education. And what they've done is they've built tools in specifically for teachers, and Meg's going to talk a little bit about that a little bit later, and so will Max. But anyway, that part is a little bit different than the regular Minecraft that you can buy for $19.99 or the mobile Minecraft that you can get on mobile devices as well, and also you can get on Xbox, PlayStation, and other things like that. So the one we're going to talk about today again is Minecraft EDU. So I'm going to show a quick video really quick. It's about four and a half minutes, and it's going to sum it up really, really quick, and it's going to blow your mind on how um, Minecraft really, really takes off. Here's an idea. Minecraft is the ultimate educational tool. You guys remember Minecraft. We made this other video about it that one time where we talked about how it's basically going to save us all. But in case you need a refresher, Minecraft is a computer game that can best be described as first-person layout, with a dash of husbandry, a heaping helping of architecture, and a pinch of slay the dragon. In survival mode, you have to gather resources and materials and fight the bad guys, some of whom are very sneaky. 
In creative mode, you get to, ready for Nicholas Cage, go nuts. The pixel in the sky is the limit. You can build whatever you want, and then start a multiplayer game and invite all your friends. You can import and export 3D models to make structures. You can share your creations with your coworkers and pals, or your students toward the end of teaching them the finer bits of computer science, art history, engineering, <laughs> civics, math, world history, and maybe most things. Say what? Now, before we get to talking about Minecraft specifically, let's talk about computer and video games in general as education tools. There is a long history of using pixels to teach kids about stuff. For about as long as there have been affordable computers, there have been educational games to put Logo taught you how to program that turtle, and Lemonade Stand taught you how to build your Lemonade Empire. Oregon Trail taught you, always ford the river. Never ford the river. Name is Beacon, Reader Rabbit, Big Brain Academy, and the list goes on. They're all great games, but they all share a common, problematic shortcoming. What if you don't want to teach typing or reading? Sure, you could use Virtual U to teach management, or Zappa Lizard to teach economics, or Roller Coaster Tycoon to teach roller coastering. But these games can't be specialized or made immersive. They lack even the basic technology for fluidity or improvisation, two things which are paramount in teaching. Like, what if you want the game to be different every year, or every class, or collaborative, or portable? Or what if you're a grade school teacher and you have to teach 10 subjects, each with many units and ideas to cover? If only there were some way to build a fully customizable network environment that was both fun and inexpensive. Aside from being an exceptionally effective way to avoid doing your homework, as it turns out, Minecraft is also an exceptionally effective teaching tool. Sorry if I just totally ruined Minecraft for you. Probability? Build a random animal dropper. Physics? Measure the time it takes a block to fall and then talk about gravity. You can build Minecraft versions of famous bits of architecture or sets for Shakespearean plays. You can place works of art inside of a Minecraft gallery or use Minecraft's mathematically ideal blocks to talk about volume and area. Teach a foreign language with in-game signs or tell kids they can only communicate with each other on a collaborative task in, I don't know, Latvian. The possibilities of what you can get into and out of a game which you thought was just for punching trees are endless. And kids respond because it's a creative, collaborative, entertaining environment where they are in control of their own challenges, which can be many. There's something like a thousand Minecraft mods for all kinds of things. Like Computer Craft is a mod which lets people write Lua programs inside Minecraft. There is even, are you ready, an official Mojang licensed version of Minecraft for education called Minecraft EDU. Experienced by Joel Levin, aka Minecraft Teacher, Minecraft EDU is to Minecraft what the teacher edition is to your history textbook, except cooler. With 20 installs at over a thousand schools across six continents, the number of students currently learning with Minecraft EDU alone is at least 20,000. Now, am I saying that we're going to see Minecraft or even video games in general in every classroom? Probably unlikely. Setting up this kind of thing requires a certain investment in technology, time on the part of the teachers, and a certain technical proficiency which, I mean, we all know the chance a piece of technology will fail is directly proportional to the number of people watching it in operation. But should we hope to eventually? I say absolutely. Studies have confidently stated things like data analysis shows that classes using the game had significantly higher means than classes not using the game. And the number of teachers documenting their overwhelmingly positive experience using Minecraft in the classroom is huge. Another source in the description. So the question might not be whether or not we use games in schools, but rather how far do we go? The game designer and advocate Jane McGonagall thinks that we should go all the way. In her book Reality is Broken, she describes a school which does not use games, but is a game. She writes, every course, every activity, every assignment, every moment of instruction and assessment would be designed by borrowing key mechanics and participation strategies from the most engaging multiplayer games. Admittedly, we're probably pretty far from that point, but as video games continue their search for legitimacy, as forms of entertainment, artworks, containers for narrative, and now educational tools, Minecraft's use in the classroom is a pretty important step. A hugely popular game made for entertainment used by a small but growing number of teachers to show that game-based learning is, in fact, worth its weight in obsidian. And who knows, maybe someday there will be a Minecraft university. What do you guys think? Are video games the future of learning? Let us know in the comments. And you should mine this block to subscribe. Go ahead, mine it up. Get your mind on. I got my eyes on you. Let's see what you guys had to say about surveillance and meteors. To carry on, actually a funny story. I know the kid who was in that movie, and I bought Josh Harris a little bit. Right. <laughs> <laughs> So I'll come back to, I want to talk a little bit about, he's wrapped it up really uh, succinctly, if you will. Um, I think that's a really, really great video. Um, I will give copies of this presentation as well so that you can share with superintendents, principals, or other administrators that don't really understand how powerful Minecraft is. And hopefully with having a teacher in the room and some students, you'll get the gist of actually what it is. So I'm gonna go ahead and talk a little bit about the essentials. So before I start, I want to talk about Notch, uh, Marcus. Uh, Pearson and he's from Sweden and 
I just looked it up. I couldn't remember how much he sold it to Microsoft for, but it was $2.3 billion. So he created this on his own to be able to play with his friends. And what ended up happening was he created an environment that basically you can do anything in. And it's a low-level program, so you can run it at a fairly low-level processing, which is a huge thing. Most gaming-type things use larger pixels, not like these pixels, but very, very intense graphics. And with Minecraft, he's done some algorithm or code that basically lowers that so that you can use that effectively. So anyway, very, very cool. There's a uh, documentary out there about him and what happened to Minecraft. Very, very uh, interesting. And anyway, I just wanted to give a little shout out to the creator. Also, I didn't really talk about yet. Near the end, I will talk about John Miller. He's from uh, King City and he lives in Paso Robles. He's a Google certified teacher as well as does the Minecraft camps. And Max, you'll see in a little bit with his shirt, uh, we're pumping up his camps um, that, that are always really super fun that we've done before. So object game, build stuff with blocks. So what's really, really phenomenal about this is you actually have to learn skills such as <laughs> mining, digging, uh, hammering things to create things. You have to have food, so you have to create your own garden. You have to find water. Um, you have to chop down trees to be able to build your fences. So it really, really relates to all different aspects and modalities of learning. So it's not just, this is a science game, or this is just a math game. This can uh, encompass and go any way that you'd like to go. So gathering raw materials, gathering resources, so now I'd like to talk a little bit about the two, two options in Minecraft. So the first option is creative mode. So creative mode, that means that it's able to let anybody build anything and everything. So what, what I mean by that is when you turn creative mode on, you're allowing the students to create anything. So for example, um, I know uh, the other day I was looking just to see if they finished Disneyland. Some folks have run in creative mode and built the entire Disneyland in Anaheim, California. Roller coasters, Max and I were actually riding Haunted, Haunted Mansion, is that what we rode? So they have all that ride actually created within Minecraft. So creative mode allows students, teachers, anyone to create anything. The cool part on Minecraft is survival mode. So survival mode, when you hit the hammer down and turn on survival mode, it means that you have to find a place because there are monsters and creepers, which is this little guy, that are coming around to find you and get you. And so I always get the question, wow, so there's actually killing sheep in Minecraft? And yes, there actually is. However, the students really actually realize the, the understanding that that is a game mode versus creative mode trumps the actual problems of, you know, I'm killing you, I'm killing you, I'm killing you. I've never been in a situation or gone to a school where most of the students have focused on the killing instead of creating. But what does happen, uh, one, of, one of the examples at our camp is when you click on survival mode, the whole room's anxiety and power goes up to 150%. And everyone is trying to save themselves by building shelter, getting food, and staying away from the monsters of the creepers. You can turn on rain, you can turn on dynamite, you can turn on fire, there's lava. So all kinds of earth elements are with, built within Minecraft. So, that part right there will change your life. One time, getting to understand and know survival mode, you will be hooked, guaranteed. You will want to do it. And that's one of the real great hooks that Minecraft has with the students. So the next thing I want to talk about uh, is single player and multiplayer, online, offline, or a local network. So when you can play online, and what I mean by that is you could log in with your own Minecraft account that costs $20, right? Or you can use the EDU version and you can have students play literally online. What we like to do is we like to set up our, on our local network. So what I mean by that is I can have Minecraft server running directly off this Mac and or it could be running on this Mac or it could be running on a PC. You can run the server simultaneously in your classroom you don't have to get the IT guy. And just to mention, I'm the director of IT in Cambria, so I get it. I know that they're busy and they may not be able to get to you or help you. 
I'm willing to come out, help you, give you two to three hours, not charge you, just come, set up your Minecraft, make sure you know how to use it, get you started, and let the kids drive the boat. The biggest thing that I've seen is teachers relinquishing that control and letting the kids actually drive the boat. It is amazing. So it's very easy to set up the server. I'm gonna talk a little bit about that and we'll show what the server looks like. It's simply clicking on a Java. It says, do you wanna install the server? You say yes, it's on that machine. You tell the kids what IP address to get on and they can jump on and get to it. It's not very complicated. If I just said IP and you're thinking, what the boop is that? I don't know what that is. Don't worry about it. Like I said, we can help you and make sure that you can get to the next level. So creative mode uh, gives you unlimited resources, unlimited possibilities, and you can fly. Why is it critical to be able to fly in Minecraft? So that you can see everything. Another really cool thing is when you get to the level of having the kids show their, their work, they can screencast themselves and show you the work that they've created and save that to you and send it to you in a Google Doc or in a Google Drive so that you can actually see the progress that they've done. Screencasting is very easy in Minecraft. There's a couple tools that we can show. But anyway, the unlimited possibilities. When you're in um, survival mode, you can run out of food and you can die, <laughs> okay? Within the creative mode, it's unlimited. You're gonna be able to find all the things that you need and you'll be able to survive and continue on, okay? So within survival mode, like I said, there are no resources, monsters will try to kill you. And again, most of this time, it's at night. There are animals in Minecraft. And as every iteration comes through with Minecraft EDU, you get a chance to see different animals and different critters. There are critters in the water. Um, water World is one of the camps that we did last year where they actually had to go into the water and identify some of the scientific fish that were actually in there and go in there and talk to them and realize what's actually going on under our ocean versus on the top and just be a land person. So, Again, with the survival mode, totally different thing. I recommend that, so far I've seen, for rewarding the children at some point to be able to let them feel the power of Minecraft. But for the most part, for the educational tool, I would say the creative mode will be 96, 97% of your time. So, and Meg again will talk a little bit about her opinions on actually going through survival mode and seeing that. Okay, go ahead, Max. All right, so there's standard, a standard set of tools and resources. So. Vanilla Minecraft is the fresh one right out of the gate. Um, what's really phenomenal is that they have a tutorial world that you get for free with the EDU. It literally has a, a red brick road, or sometimes it's yellow, I can't, can't remember, but you're taught how to walk through Minecraft and cruise through. You get to a place where you have to jump over and it tells you what to do. Hit the space bar, jump over. It tells you how to jump over the things. Once you get over that, you keep going to the right, you keep coming up, and then all of a sudden you're placed in front of you a ladder. How am I gonna get up the ladder? It talks you through and helps the, any person that's never touched Minecraft before to actually experience that one-on-one. -on -one. The tutorial world, again, comes with the EDU, it's free, and it probably takes you about 22, 25 minutes. Very simple and easy for any teacher, student, parent to be able to walk through that tutorial world. So that's another really cool part about the Minecraft EDU. So, again, it is a modified version of Minecraft designed for educators. Some of the tools that are actually placed in Minecraft will blow your mind. All right, you're doing an exercise in Minecraft, you're sitting there, everything's going well, the kids are participating, everyone's going, you want to stop. You simply can click a button, and we'll show in a little bit how that works, and freeze everyone in the entire world. They can't do anything, and then the, the amount of, oh, oh, you know, you'll hear that for a second, but once you get them back on task, then you can make your point. And again, Meg will talk a little bit about that in the classroom, what it's like as a teacher doing Minecraft. Go ahead. Okay, so again, typically you'll start with the vanilla, vanilla Minecraft and add teacher-friendly features. So go ahead, Max, go to the next one. So the server tool, again, has the teacher dashboard, and Max is gonna show that in a little bit, and Meg will talk a little bit about how the dashboard is really, really relevant and designed from the ground up by educators for educators so that we know the pitfalls that you're gonna come through with a class of 30 kids cranking on Minecraft and you're trying to get some things done. Go ahead, Max. Okay, so at this juncture, what I'd like to do is I'm gonna switch, give me like, half a second. I'm going to switch and Max is going to show you a little bit of Minecraft. Currently we've um, put
put on here the humanities world, which I think is phenomenal. It will blow your mind and you'll be able to see he also built in a tutorial world within that. Um, I can help you, the humanities world. What's really awesome about this, there is a Minecraft um, forum out there that will help you do and download any worlds that you want that they've already done. They have tutorials. I mean, literally, you have to set up Minecraft and start rolling with it to be able to get that done. So give me just a sec. I'm going to switch um, spots here. Go ahead. Keep plugging in. So what I'd like to show you really quick is when you log into Minecraft for the first time, what's really, really powerful also about it is the names. The students can name themselves however you'd like to name them, but at least I would probably suggest their real names as a teacher because you'll be able to pinpoint some of the interesting behaviors that could happen. <laughs> okay, so Max is going to go ahead and choose his name, and what's really nice about that in the teacher tool, you'll be able to search for Max. Also, you could send Max things. Okay? And what I mean by that is maybe he needs a, a diamond or he needs a pickaxe or he needs something that is in his world that he's actually trying to get to. Of course, you pick female. Um, go ahead, you click something. Multiplayer. So, what we've done here is um, I don't think that's it. What is that? It is. Okay, there it is. Go ahead, Max. Right here, first, but, well, that's okay. I can show that next time. So right now he's going to go through and click, I'm a student, but this time I want him to actually click, I'm a teacher, because I would like to uh, showcase some of the teacher tools. So right now there's a, a, a teacher password that we've done, which is Creeper, just letting you know. Um, and what we've done is once he logs in, every time the teacher logs in, they, him or her has to have a password to be able to get into that. Once they're in Minecraft, they can always press now the M button, and that will pull up the teacher tools really quickly so that they can get back to slowing stuff down or continues. Yeah. So um, what Max did right there, I wasn't watching, but I'm pretty sure he did you teleported, teleported himself to, uh, uh, yeah, just yeah. stop there for just a sec, Max and all, I'll talk. So um, these are areas within the humanities world. So within the humanities world, um, there are lots of different places. I believe when you arrive to the humanities world, and we'll go back to the beginning in a second, it's in Seattle, and you arrive right in front of you is the big Space Needle. There's a MetLife building. So they've literally created downtown Seattle right there in the beginning. Really, really phenomenal stuff, and you're able to see what kids can create, as well as teachers, to emulate some kind of area. So right here, um, at the top here, these are the teacher tools. So let's go to this one, Max, at the top. So right in here, this is a pretty big one right here, creative mode. So you can turn that on or turn it off. So that's the area where I kind of talked a little bit about the basics about having survival as well as creative. And then over here on the left-hand side, uh, that one, Max. So right here is allow generating structures. And literally what that means is if you're allowing that to happen, then you're allowing the kids to create quick, efficiently, and fast large buildings or structures. Lots of different things, the weather effects. There's difficulty, there you can make it normal, you can make it um, easy, hard. Um, allowing other dimensions, um, allowing villagers, those are just people randomly cruising around Minecraft that you could talk to or connect with. Um, also, allowing animals. So this is a really phenomenal thing. If you're in a, a grade where you're you know, not wanting to discuss animals for some reason and you're wanting a smaller area, then you could actually turn some of these things on and off. As you get into Minecraft, you'll understand a little bit more about why these things are, are critical in understanding. Go ahead, Max. So um, here's the key one right here, freezing students. So at that juncture, you're allowed basically to say, okay, hold on everybody, I have a message to tell you. I'm gonna send you a pickaxe or I'm gonna, <laughs> we're gonna go 
teleport to this spot and we're going to work together to build this together quickly. I know that Meg, she'll be able to talk a little bit about building Monarch Grove. She actually did some math practical applications to be able to build Monarch Grove and what it looked like. The kids were excited about it, number one, because they're doing something for their own school. They have ownership, as well as the underlying principle is they're learning math at the same time. So you can mute students. Um, students can build. You can allow respawning. And respawning means if they do die for some reason, um, they can get back really quick and they continue to move on. Because sometimes they do have a little bit of fighting and something goes on, but you can allow that to happen. Okay? What's the next one next? So this was key again. When we talked a little bit about the names, you could search immediately, find out where that student is, teleport right to them, give them things. Really, really cool stuff to be able to, um, to see that. So this one's really, really awesome. This is assignments, OK? You can literally create assignments within Minecraft that the students have to actually do, go through the process. And then once you've created the assignment, and he's doing a test one right now, I think. So once you've created the assignment, the student gets to that zone. And once they finish it, they can do a checkbox and actually let you know, hey, I actually did finish this assignment. So they've really, really thought through uh, educational based type activities. So here's Max's test here. Um, welcome, we did press M. That's to be able to get to the teacher tool. That's part of EDU, putting that in there so you kind of know your first assignment on how to do that. OK, go up to the next couple, Max. So this is the part I kind of talked about. You're able to give blocks. You're able to give different types of items to the student. How much, which player, give to all. So you could say, OK, you know what? You guys are awesome today. I'm going to give you a uh, nice fat diamond, and you can do what with it you'd like. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. OK, keep going. So say that again. Did that one? OK, and the last one, did we do that one? OK, so this one also allows you to do the build mode and long distance building. So what's really cool is a lot of times what you'll do to start off Minecraft is literally have um, a set of parameters, they can only build around a certain area. So when you're starting to get going, you can say, you know what, let's build together for the first time. Um, we're going to build a small town. And each child gets to have a component that they're really passionate about. Maybe it's a post office they want to build. Maybe they want to be the police. Maybe they want to be the county office of education. Maybe they want to be a university. Any type of stuff that they want to build in their town, you allow them to go ahead and create and build that town. Then you come back and can revisit and say, OK, what part of this town did you build? How did you make this? And you can have the students actually talk about why they chose that as well as what they built. So at this point, I do want to go back. Can we go back, Max, to the beginning of the world? I want to show what it looks like right when you walk in. So you may have to log out or log back in. I'm not quite sure. Um, so this is the beginning of the actual humanities world, which this man created for free. It's phenomenal. Really, really cool. Even if you're not into humanities, and that's not your language, or that's not your discipline, you could still use this to be able to start. So again, welcome, use the mouse to look around, and it tells you to use W, A, S, and D to move around, press the space bar to jump, there's a tutorial behind the sun. So if Max starts to walk through, he can show really quick what it looks like to go through that tutorial. And as he's flipping around, you can see, follow the red brick road to the tutorial area. So as he's going to walk through, just go through a couple spots, Max, so you can have him see what the jump looks like. So as he's coming through, like I said, this is already built into the humanities world. You don't necessarily have to do the tutorial world in Minecraft because he's built that directly in there. And again, this is a free world available to anybody. It takes five minutes to download, pop it on your server, you let the kids go, and then you can you know, explore. Go ahead. OK. So um, right here, here's the tutorial there. And if you kept going right there, it has another sign at the back that will say, press jump to be able to press the space bar to be able to jump over that. So again, this is a really, really intuitive way. Kids love this stuff. Once you let them loose, this humanities world is built really, really thoroughly in minds of students. So they can explore, go to different places, and actually see things. So I did want Megs to come up in a couple secs here to actually talk about her experience in Minecraft 
what kind of things she's experienced, the pitfalls, <laughs> and I, I wanted to be completely frank and honest with you about some of the things that she's had you know, issues with so that you know and can, can address those so that you're kind of aware of those. So if I don't, if you don't mind, will you come yeah, up next? Can I see from here? Is that okay? Is that okay, Michael? Can she see? Won't be able to see you. My camera? My camera? Like Henry said, my name's Megan, August 7th. I teach at Laguna Middle School, and last year I taught at Monarch Grove Elementary, so I'm a San Luis Obispo, uh, San Luis Coastal school teacher. I know that um, you are as well, and you look very familiar as I was well. at Baywood, the library. Tent. Okay, yeah, that's, that's where I know you from. Daughter. That's where I know you from. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I was fascinated, well, not fascinated, I was wondering what my son was so fascinated about. My son, Ashton, is good friends with Max, and so Max invited me to attend the um, camp that um, Joe Miller. Miller puts on. John Miller. John Miller. No, John sorry, Miller. Sorry, John. Joe Miller is another key player that you'll want to connect with. Um, but John Miller introduced me to the wonderful world of humanities, basically, he, he used as his um, vehicle to teach us all about. And it inspired me to get a club going at Monarch. So I offered through the PTA an opportunity for students to join me for an after school club. I've run um, a club now for this is my second year. We call it Minecraft Mondays. Always meet on Mondays. It's uh, catchy and kids always remember. Um, this year it's a lunchtime club. But one of the biggest projects that I did at Monarch or that we attempted to do is Max helped me because he was a student of mine there. He was able to be my TA and pretty much teach me everything. I was pretty intimidated at first. I had no idea what was going on. Um, but going to summer camp and then having Max right there with me, um, I've learned a ton. And it's actually the students that will teach you the most. Um, like Max was going through on the dashboard, the teacher has full control of the program. Um, you're able to limit your students from doing things that you don't want them to or open it wide open. It's very easy with just with a, a finger click. And um, what we did do at Monarch though is we went into Google Earth and we did some measurement activities. We used the ruler there and we measured um, the, the perimeter of all the buildings on Monarch Grove um, campus. And then we went back into Minecraft and we tried our best to recreate so that it could be somewhat of a tour for students to use if they were new to the area. Um, we had a lot of fun with it, but we did have some pitfalls. Uh, because it was a pilot year for me, I didn't know a whole lot about running a server. Um, I lost a lot of information. I wasn't sure how to save things here and there, but I'm learning as we go. Um, this year, the club just started. It took a little bit of um, time, but with the money that we generated at Monarch Club, we were able to talk the district into supporting our endeavor. So we do have, for teachers in San Luis Coastal, we have a server that is supported by the district. And so Joe Miller is our go-to for um, Minecraft in San Luis Coastal. And he's a great one to talk to. He will come to campus, he will teach you how to run the server, and from there, the students will help you. So this year, um, we just had our third meeting. Um, I would say that the first meeting that you, if you choose to run a club or choose to use it in your classroom, that the first meeting or so is done without computers. Um, it's really important that you get your classroom expectations down pat because students know more than you and will do a lot of things that you don't know how to control. So griefing is the number one um, topic to discuss with your students. And mm -hmm. Max, what's griefing? Um, it's it's when like so like if someone built something then someone would destroy it so like it's kind of it's I guess it's like messing up someone's stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So like it's kind of like cyberbullying, like, huh? Yeah, called yeah. Reefing? It's called griefing. griefing. And so my but first punch, like, yeah, because you can go and when you're on multiplayer mode, you're in uh, the world with everyone that's in your classroom, and so there's a lot to control. Um, each individual, you have to trust that they're going to be making good choices when they're inside, but it's nice because your dashboard, you want to go to that um, where your students are, players are right there. When you go here, you can turn them off if you feel like Henry's not behaving appropriately or sometimes um, students choose to grief and just see it, it, you know what would happen. I can turn his uh, motion off and freeze him and he will automatically know that he can't move anymore. Um, I can also turn talking on and off. Um, I can teleport students to where I am, so if they get lost in a world, I can go there and then bring them to me. Or if they're working with a group of students, 
um, and they can't find each other, I can teleport students to them. So it's a nice way um, I have learned for students to collaborate and cooperate together. Is this um, the end? Sorry, yes, okay. so when you click on M, your whole teacher dashboard will come up. And then all of these um, buttons on top, these tabs will allow you to have full control. Now, when Henry talks about survival mode, that's when my heart rate gets too high. And I don't like survival mode. It worries me. And I don't like the talk of killing. I don't like the talk of destroying. And um, So I tend to just stay in a creative mode or the Minecraft EDU mode. Um, and I have learned from Joe, as well as through Henry and Max, that these maps have been created by people all over the world. There's a huge Minecraft world out there for you to connect with and talk with people, and um, they've given free permission for anyone to download their work. And once you download it to your server, then it becomes your map. So you can add to it, you can take things down, but once you save it, it's then your map. So you could go into a wonderful world of humanities and you can add another location. Like if you're studying ancient China right now, I'm not really sure where you are in your curriculum, but um, the wonderful world of humanities goes right in line uh, with the seventh grade, eighth, well, I don't know if it's eighth grade, but I think it's seventh grade history curriculum. But you can go in and assign students to, instead of make a poster presentation, um, go into Minecraft EDU and create um, according to um, a place that they study and put characters in there that can talk to you or they can place signs or information blocks and they can write a report but display it in this fashion. It's very motivating, it's very engaging. Um, kids just love it and they've been asking why can't we have Minecraft Club every day but it's just not possible. So. I don't know what else cool. I can share. Awesome. Um, I'm still learning, and there's a lot to learn. But start small, and you'll see the benefits of it. It's a lot of fun. Cool. Thank you. So the next, I want to have Max talk for a couple minutes on redstone. So come up here, Superman. And if you can, talk a little bit. Um, if you're watching in the background, Max was actually flying around. You could see him. He also jumped on a roller coaster as well and created a quick cart and was able to ride through this roller coaster. So I wanted him to talk a little bit about, I've seen a couple maps out there that have conservation, uh, one of the conservation maps that I found that actually built a watershed. So they can use redstone technology as well as other things to be able to build anything and everything. And redstone basically in my mind is a phenomenal engineering way to do anything. You can build circuit boards, you can actually build a binary calculator if you'd like in Minecraft. All those type of things are based on the redstone theory and hopefully um, Max can give an example of and talk a little bit about how he's used redstone. Um, yeah, you can show them if you want really quick, but talk real quick and then. Uh, one example was my wife and I's uh, anniversary was a, a little while ago, and he actually built out of redstone. Uh, we were in a roller coaster, cruising up. You'd see a big picture of us or a sign or someplace, and as we walked through all these things, we had to click a switch. It opened the door. So multiple things could happen, and it was a very nice way for him to express himself within Minecraft and give us a gift and using technical things like redstone to be able to do that. So yeah, redstone's kind of like circuitry, so um, it's like, basically, it's kind of like, I guess, a wire, because you need a power source to uh, turn on redstone. So like, example, you could have a lever, and if you switch the lever, the redstone would be activated, and then you could connect that to a door, and then if you, when you switch the lever and the redstone is activated, the door would open. And that's pretty basic, so you could like, you can make like, if you step on a pressure plate, which is another way to activate redstone, you if you step on it, the door will open. So, yes, like about fireworks. Talk to him about fireworks uh, and redstone. You can you can make like a firework show. So if you press a button, fireworks go everywhere, and you can make them like star fireworks and creeper fireworks. So I wanted Max to kind of give you a couple examples of redstone and what it what it kind of looks like. Do you have something? Yeah, you can, you can show if you want in the background. But anyway, it is very, very powerful. What I saw with the fireworks was 
many, many pressure plates lined up and a student running across the pressure plates and every time they touch one of the pressure plates, a different firework could come off or go to a different place. You can also do different things, like I said, with conservation and ways that Redstone really takes it to the next level when students are at a zone that they can get past that. But um, again, Redstone, another phenomenal thing that's actually hardwired and built into Minecraft. Uh, all right, so like, example, I can, like I was saying, I can place a lever, and that would that would be our, that will activate the redstone. I'll place the redstone. Oh, oops. Hmm. I'll place the redstone, and then I'll put the door right, oops. I'll put the door right there, and then when you switch on the lever, the door will open, and when you switch it off, it will close. So that's a quick example of how fast he did that. Another thing with redstone is the roller coaster. The track is literally a bunch of redstone, having them go down, go through tunnels, do go through, you know, on top of water, all kinds of different ways. So again, to me, um, <laughs> that redstone is an underlying phenomenal thing that educators could actually use. So I know we're almost done, a, a few more minutes. I wanted to open it up and ask any, if ha anybody had any questions. Um, I'll give you my contact again this presentation. I, I'm really appreciative that we have some students that came today. I'm sorry if you thought you were going to get to play Minecraft. I'm, I'm sorry that, that didn't happen. But hopefully you learned a, a, a few things today about Notch or, or something to that effect. But I'd like to open it up really quick. quick. Is there any, anybody have any questions? That's the cost of the server? So let me um, put that up there. It's about, um, makes, do you remember, I think it's, I think it's two, two, 273, if I'm not mistaken, and that's for 25 licenses that you buy one time, okay? Once you buy those one time, what's really cool about it is you can, you don't have to have it singled to one lab, okay? So if during that point, um, the elementary school, it didn't work out there, they didn't want to use it, those licenses aren't used up. Minecraft EDU, they're very, very kind with their licenses. Um, there's no big bad wolf trying to you know, check to see every single license is it there. They're very, very open. So uh, what I do is I end up um, sharing with the districts, and I've talked to the EDU people about this. I share with them one time with it, and in the understanding that, okay, here it is, you can set it up, try it once in your classroom, see how it rolls. If you decide to do it, then you pay the 25 licenses and go through. So what I like to do is get people hooked and let them try it to see if it's something that they can actually manage or try. But within districts, like Meg said, there are places out there that are having the licenses already done. Once you've paid for them, you basically put it on any server, or again, it can run from your Mac or your PC. It's really, really a phenomenal uh, program. So, is there any other questions? Um, yeah. I saw a parent posted, um, either, was it either on Twitter or Facebook, their child's mission project. Mm -hmm. It was pretty cool on Minecraft. Mm -hmm. And he, his voice, I think it's his voice, is walking. It is. Is that pretty complicated to do? No. So, within, within Minecraft, you're able to have, um, he's doing a screencast. So, once he's purchased, or sorry, built his actual mission, whichever one he's built, he flies around or walks around and does a screencast of everything that he's built and talks you through the whole thing. And at the end of that, he saves it, sends it as a movie. Um, sometimes it's different. It, it's pretty sweet. So to me, there's so much more um, creativity that can happen versus and no disrespect for the folks that have made phenomenal popsicle stick ones or you know the ones that we've seen before but the minecraft really does open up a lot of different capabilities that the physical does not so that's a great point yes um, it's not very difficult to do the screencasting so you can fly around or walk around and that's typically how minecraft teachers will have their students hand in their homework is send me a screencast of what you've done is that something that we can learn on the EDU? Like that yeah, yeah. I will point you uh, to the, the resources. Um, before we leave here, I'll, I'll throw the Minecraft EDU um, uh, camper site up. That one has everything and everything. Uh, really, really phenomenal. And again, I'll give you my contact to make sure that um, I can talk with your IT people too because we talk the same language and stuff and can reassure them. As soon as I actually showed Joe Miller, who is the San Luis Coastal Network technician, he had already been playing Minecraft and was super stoked about it, but getting the, the servers all out there, you know, there is a process to get that done, but it, it's not that difficult. But he's already done it. But yeah, because I'm you're ready to go. Oh, you are? Yeah. Okay, yeah. So, 
make a request, he actually literally comes to the site. I mean, mm -hmm. I know a lot of techs that will come yeah. set up that type of environment. And for the San Miguel people, thank you for coming long, long way. We will come out there too. It's not that far. And again, I was telling you, I have friends that, that work there. So um, if that's something that you want me to do, then I can come help you set it up and talk with the techs there too and get it done for you. Okay.